down, son. Let's go. Sit down. Fuck you. Sniper on this one, to be honest. Ooh! What the fuck did I just blow up? What's going on, YouTube? So, um, Vanguard's been out for officially one full day. I mean, a little bit over a full day now. But, uh, you know, we just streamed eight hours yesterday. We're on here now as we speak. But, um, I'm gonna go through my settings since, uh, it's where I'm gonna probably keep them now um so as you can see here we got full screen display res resolution and i'm just running at 1080 but i do have a 1440p monitor but 1080p is all you need on um, you know your gaming monitor in this case i use lg ultra gear 165 refresh rate you want the highest possible vsync off frame rate either run unlim unlimited or custom and crank it up so you get unlimited in game and menus to stay at 60. Aspect ratio automatic, brightness I keep mine at 50. But I'll show you guys that in just a few moments of what I use for the NVIDIA game filters. Display gamma 2.2, HDR off. That just makes it look weird. But I do have HDR on my monitor settings, but you want to turn this off in game if you do have that option. Focus mode off. Your display adapter, your, your GPU, and then on demand streaming. I almost forgot to turn this off. You want that off. It's its own tab, apparently. Um, now you go over to quality, rendering resolution 100, dynamic resolution off, texture resolution at medium. And I'm running the filter anisotropic at medium as well. You can run this at medium, high, whatever, whatever you know preference doesn't really affect the VRAM usage all too much maybe one FPS you know what I mean if I drop down the medium just medium looks good enough you know and I get keep these two at the same uh, particle quality level I have it at low I mean you could I experimented with the medium but there's not much of a change so why not have that low particle resolution at low this uh, has a medium effect on your VRAM Bullet impact of sprays, I have this on for now. I mean, in this game, because you have all that destructible walls, windows, etc., it's just nice to have this on. You know what I mean? It just. But on Warzone, I had this off because it isn't CPU intensive. But this game ain't CPU intensive, so it ain't gonna affect you too much. Shader quality, I just put this at low. Tessellation, I normally have this off, but. In this game, I don't know. I'm experimenting with this. So right now I have it on nearby only. It just uh, helps rendering the quality a little bit. Uh, level of detail, distance range, short. Nearby level of detail, low. I had this on high, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very minimal difference. Distance level, detail, low. Clutter draw distance, low. Biometric quality level, low. Now we go into shadow and lighting. So screen space shadows, I turn them off. Shadow map resolution, very low, or you put the low. But you know how shadows are in FPS games. Sun shadow cascades, drop this to low. It uh, sets the quality of distant sunlight shadows. And you know, if you don't really need that in competitive COD. You know what I mean? I have the uh, cache spot and sun shadows off. 
So in that case, we'll put that to very low. Obviously, this goes with this, but it affects your VRAM, VRAM very high. So, but in Warzone, we have these on for because in certain part of Verdansk, it has a FPS drop. But now, let's undo the slim. Anyway, we have this off, not very low, and then spot shadow quality at low, quality level low. This you could experiment with. Um, you know, doesn't really affect your VRAM too much, but I just do it down the low or medium. Um, ambient occlusion, I have that off. SSR, which is screen space reflection, turn that off. Um, I have DOSS off, but um, I'm using anti alias, in which you guys will see that in a minute. So, DOSS off, Fidel super resolution off, it still has the one underneath it, the KAS or whatever. But anti aliasing, I am running the Filmic SMMA 2, I mean T2X. Um, and then we have some more advanced options with this one in this game. So you have the quality of the anti aliasing. I experimented with high, but medium is just perfect enough, and then you got the Filmic strength right underneath. I just kept it at 100, but medium. That's all you need, like I said. But if you want to try to squeeze out more FPS for your game, you can drop it down. But it's not much of a difference in this game. Depth of field off. And then VRM used to target at a slough mine at 85%. There's no need to really change it unless you have any problems. Um, I'm running my FOV at 110 affected. And then camera movement, you want this at least or 50 percent this is uh when explosions happen and stuff it you know shakes your camera you know what i'm saying you, you so if you don't want that drop that down but you have three options weapon blur war blur off and then the video reflex loading you see i'm just using mine on because like i said it's not cpu intensive so it's no need to use on and boost unless you're having it to be that way audio is everything's pretty much Normal, I have a hundred for master music. I turned it down because you know, listen to music in the intermissions dialogue volume. I turned it down just a bit so I can still hear them talking, but it's not all too loud. That's over, you know, it's not interrupting me trying to listen and using comms or whatnot. The sound effects, I still have it at 100, hit marker is 75, but I might maybe turn that off. I'm gonna turn that up. Because uh, I'm using classic hit marker sounds. So, classic just gives that uh, World War II hit marker sound. Or you can use the Vanguard, which is pretty much classic on Cold War. It's weird. But I like the classic. And then right now I'm using the headphone audio mix. So I would say either use headphones or home theater. Home theater is really good. But headphones tend to work more dynamic with the. The EQ settings. Other than that, everything else normal. You know, you got your headset, device. Oh, I have that. I'm pushing to talk. I'll leave it there. Not really talking to anybody. Anyway, that's that. Interface is all you know. Blah blah blah. You got all your. Everything is the same except for I put these all on. Most of them. And a controller. Uh, I have my control overclocked. Um, I didn't make a video on that yet. It's kind of, it's not difficult. It's pretty easy, but it's pretty much really zero millisecond response time. So right now I'm using horizontal at five and vertical at four. And then yeah, I kept these at one. My ADS sensitivity, I put at 0 0.80. And other than that, I changed the curve type to dynamic. So you guys know I've run dynamic on the others, the other games, but it's preference. And other than that, we've got the threshold down here. Uh, in this game, they call it the dead zone. So same thing you would do in Cold War. You drop this all the way down and then move it up until you have no stick drift. On mine, six works, and you want this, you know, cranked up to ninety-nine or oh, hundred. I don't know. I didn't know I had a hundred, but anyway. That's it for the settings, and we can look into a NVIDIA control panel right now. 
So all F3. See, so here, first I got brightness and contrast. Exposure 0%, contrast 0%. Highlights, I uh, just dropped it down to negative 10%. Shadows, negative 36%. So pretty much what I did was use my Black Ops Cold War ones and kind of tune them a little bit just for this game. You know what I mean? Because the different lightings. Details, 42% for Sharpen. Clarity, 36%. HDR toning, 36%. And then here you want color. So, you know what I mean? You add filter, you get all those here. So color, tint, and tint intensity at 0%. Temperature, 0 and then vibrance, I uh, cranked it up to 50%. But you could play with that preference. That's all I use for filters, and it makes the game look beautiful. All right, that's my settings.